Holy moly. <laughs> What's up, fellow movie fans? Welcome to Real to Real, your home for an ever evolving discussion of film in all of its forms. I am KP. And I'm the mayor. And KP and I are just a few minutes out from watching the Oscars and uh, still a little bit in shock. A little bit. My heart's yeah. racing right now. I need some food in me, maybe a few drinks, maybe 20. Yeah. Because this is drunk drinks. tonight. Oh, yeah. It's oh, weird. Yeah. yeah, it has to. <laughs> <laughs> this was one of the most interesting Oscars. And uh, KP and I, we were discussing how before the Oscar nominations, we're like, oh, this is probably going to be a very weird year because last year was such a, a mess, obviously, with the COVID pandemic. And then the nominations came out. And we're like, oh, this is, this is actually all solid. So the winners are going to be solid, too. And everything and the show's going to go very smooth. It's going to be a quick little ride. And, uh, we, we didn't really get that, Katie. And it was like all over the place. That's the thing. It's not like a, something where, you know, like, oh, picture was a surprise or anything like that. You want to know why? Because picture wasn't at the end. <laughs> what in the world? You know, we're thinking that maybe, you know, director will hype us to picture because, you know, it's going to be second to last. Director was what, halfway through? What is this? I was literally in the bathroom for it because I thought it was going to cut to commercial or be a smaller war and I was having some some tummy issues. And all of a sudden, <laughs> I hear KP on it. I mean, I check my phone, best director's up in the first like half hour, 45 minutes of the show. Oh my goodness. Sodenberg just throw it us Lead. Yeah, and yeah. We should have known, right? When when Soderbergh's directing, you got, you gotta expect the unexpected, right? Um, this year was weird, and like we said, it's not for any kind of like obvious, predictable ways. It's more so in the the format. Soderbergh did a really good job, kind of creating an unevenness to like make us feel kind of off kilter with where the show was going. Um, they did a really good. Hey, I want to commend Soderbergh and his team, the producers, for keeping the show under three and a half hours. Every show has teetered over the three and a half hour mark. We were done by what eight fifteen, maybe. Like, that's incredible. Like, to get an Oscar show to get streamlined down to a shorter time frame, I think it helps a lot of people watch it that aren't, you know, like us and so many out there that um, can sit through, like, a five-hour Oscar because, you know, we're watching meticulously for every nominee and every, uh, you know, prognosticator of guessing and everything like that. So, um, it's pretty cool, but, like... It threw us off. Yeah, it, go? it started off just normal. They haven't been doing hosts these past few years, so we're like, okay, we're just going to go right into the awards. And we start off with screenplay, which is already kind of a shock. And thankfully for uh, for us, the promising young woman won original. It was the favorite to win. Thankfully, it did. It's a fantastic script. I love Emily Fennell. I'm so happy she won. And then we had like a slight upset with the father winning for adapted screenplay, but right. But a good one. Right. A right. good upset. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, this show. I don't think it's going to have too many surprises. You know, Danny Puglia won Best Supporting Actor. We were expecting that. Yu Young Jung. Young won Young. Best Supporting Actress, which was, again, something we were super rooting for the entire time. It was wonderful, and her acceptance speech was hilarious. So good. <laughs> uh, we also had another round win Best Foreign Language Film. That's our you know favorite film from last year. And Vinkerberg probably gave the speech of the whole show. Very oh touching. Goodness. And so everything was just rolling good. There was no comedy bits. And interestingly enough, no musical performances. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I just threw it off because we're so used to it. You know, yeah. well, at least we got a little bit of the blips during Best Original Song. And speaking of original song, that was actually one of the bigger upsets of the night with yes. her winning for uh, her performance with Juice and the Black Messiah over uh, the double nominee, Leslie Odom Jr. And of course, poor uh, Diane Warren, who's been nominated nine, nine times, times without a victory. Oh. Um, You're going to get it one day, Diane. <laughs> I promise we you. We are rooting for you. <laughs> so it, the show was just like, it was moving along fine everything was hitting the marks and then we noticed the time and how quick it's going and we got down to best picture and the, the two lead acting performances and even the, and even the, the, the top five we were at a uh, song and score yeah even at the at the end of it we're just like so like five left and yeah. it's like 720 yeah. like this is weird and I was making jokes I'm like what are they gonna do to fill the time they're just gonna do all these gags and everything and we actually only got one comedic bit the whole show which in which has Glenn Close throwing it back. It's like a hip hop song. That's it. That was the memorable moment of the night. Top. That was it. That's going to be what we remember this year for. Yeah. <laughs> like the one Ellen DeGeneres picture with everybody. Yes. That was like the big moment. This one's going to be Glenn Close shaking her butt in front of everybody. Duh blood. Good for Glenn Close. That performance is better than Hillbilly Elegy. So I'm, I'm happy for you, Glenn. Um, <laughs> so after that bit, all of a sudden, I, I, was, I was joking with KP. I'm like, what if they do picture? Because best actor and best actress have been the talk all year. And I laughed at you. Like, yeah. straight up. I'm yeah. like, that's just not... That's the whole thing about the show. You're leading yourself to what is considered the best film of the year. And the, and the mayor came up with such a great perspective on it. He was saying, it's just like, well, it's Soderbergh for one thing. And secondly, I mean picture kind of feels kind of safe, right? Like, it could have an upset, but I mean, Zhao Wen, director, no man lands the front runner, but actor and actress are the ones that everyone's talking about with Chadwick's passing and his seemingly, like, 
kind of a lifetime win with winning, and then obviously the tension with actress. All five nominees having won something big in this year leading up to the big one. It just felt really uh, tense. And, uh, you know, the mayor was saying how I think they're going to they're gonna try to end it on like a, on a cliffhanger. You know, and I was like, <laughs> that's not a cliffhanger, though. That's weird. <laughs> I, just, I could not fathom it. <laughs> yeah, it is. And so when uh, I, I came around who walked up for, for Best Picture and it said Best Picture, we, we lost them. That was uh, Rita Moreno from Rita Marino, uh, Supporting thank Actress you. winner for West Side Story. Yes, thank you. Yes. And of course, West Side Story that promotes Steven Spielberg's one. Makes so, sense. You know, makes yeah. Um, so when I said best picture third out, I looked at KP, my eyeballs and it shot out of my you head. You kind of screamed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did, yeah. A, a few profanities you yeah. know, were, were shouted because I was mind blown. And uh, best picture ended up being the safe choice. It was yeah. Nomad Land, which has been the talk literally a year straight. Yeah. Like, no chance of an upset. Yeah. We were kind of hoping for one. Yeah, but, yeah. That's a, that, yeah, to be really clear, obviously, we think all eight nominees have validity for the nomination for picture. There are some that are stronger than others. I think if you've seen our list, um, you know, Nomad Land sits at, unfortunately, like number seven. Seven, right above Mink for us. And again, it's not a comparison of like dislike to like as much as it's just like better quality as an overall picture. So as Mank is like very formulaic, we found Nomadland to be just a little bit harder to grasp as a whole picture of quality versus everything else above it from Promising Young Woman and Minari to, you know, Jesus and the Black Messiah, The Father, um, and you know, the other two nominees. I don't know how I just named four and I forgot the other two. Yeah. Um, <laughs> shame on me. Yeah. Trial of Chicago 7. And Sound of Metal. Sound of Metal. Okay. I love Sound of Metal. There's a lot of stress right now. There is. Okay. It's like, my heart's racing still. So yeah, so for us, it just it was just kind of a... Underwhelming. It's yeah. just what it was. It just it was expected, and we were kind of hoping for an upset. Yeah, especially with how the voting system works for Best Picture. You never know. It always gets a little scary, especially when we get towards the awards. And we didn't see Nomadland winning everything. I thought it would be cinematography and screenplay. I'm like, there's a chance. You know, what could it possibly be? You know, but we got Nomadland, and that's okay. But then up came Best Actress, and we when we were scared because, as KP mentioned, we had no idea. All five nominees have a, a solid reasoning for winning. And we were really hoping for Carrie Mulligan for Promising Young Woman, such a bold performance. And we also had Viola Davis, who's never yep. won lead actress, and she's one of the best actresses ever. Yep. But then Frances McDormand just comes in for Nomad Land and yep. wins her third Oscar. It, it kind of reminded me of Spotlight, how we were, you were talking about Spotlight that year. It was just mm -hmm. that it was a movie that was talked about from the get go, and then it kind of got lost in a year of other great films like you know, Revenant, Mad Max, and a number of you know, Bridge of Spies, all these other movies. And then it just kind of like snuck back up and just one picture and screenplay, one of the only best picture winners just to win two, you know? And so that's what it felt like with Frances winning. It was just like she got all the talk early on Nomad Land, oh, this movie, and we were like excited. And then, but all these other performances started coming up, and we were just like, oh, this is great. Wow, these are all vastly different and it just felt like there was a lot of momentum for other ones and so we're just like it'd be fun to see anyone win especially Violet or Carrie we were really excited for both those wins because these actresses are stellar and no no disrespect to Frances McDormand you know she's a two-time winner already and now tonight she becomes a four-time winner mm -hmm. in one night winning picture for producer and actress. That's incredible. Um, but yeah, just a little underwhelming. That's all. Yeah. Yeah, I love Frances. She's one of my favorite mm -hmm. actresses. But you know, she went up there and it was like another day at the office. Like, all right, thank you. Goodbye. Yep. You know, Especially yeah. after that. I mean, after the wolf howl. Yeah, of, yeah. She, of she, producer. <laughs> when, when she accepted the award for producer, her and Koh Zhao, like, yeah, she legit gave a wolf howl. Really, yet again, see, this last part of the show, the more I say it out loud, the crazier it actually is. Yeah. So Frances winning was like, okay, it, it's fine. Another thing to know, obviously, the trend for uh, the acting nominee uh, 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 announcements tends to come with the opposite gendered uh, role. So when you win for supporting actor, the next year you present for supporting actress. And the same thing goes for actor and actress. So obviously we were all expecting when we were gonna, okay, we're getting actor and actress at the end. This is weird. So, you know, we're prepping for actress and we're expecting Joaquin Phoenix to walk in. But, you know, Renee Zellweger walks up and we're like, oh, they're giving to their own category. It already felt weird. It just felt weird. It's not about like, the idea of like, it's right that way. It's just like, it's a cool honor. So it just, I don't know. There's just, there's a sense of disingenuousness that comes from like switching that. It yeah. just didn't seem necessary because they were already going to be there and do it. But then they did it for, I don't know. Yeah, it was weird. Cause I feel know, weird. Yeah. <laughs> so we had a great moment with uh, Yu Young Jung oh, from Minari and she got to make jokes with Brad Pitt. Pitt. You know, so it was like, it was great to have that little counterbalance, but uh, this one we didn't get. It felt like Sodenberg wasn't directing so it felt like an M. Night Shyamalan film. Yeah, yeah. It's like, how many twists are they just going to keep throwing? And no one was doing the editing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness it was just it was just so bizarre Such it was so time. bizarre so to, to, to finish off the show after we saw those best actress and the best actor it's like oh we know exactly what the academy wants they want to end it with rewarding chad with books how right? could it not be right right 
Yeah. Are we wrong, right? It's the encompassment of an entire year of hype for Chadwick. I mean, Chadwick has been a presence of uh, African-American cinematic pride on, on par with the greats like Denzel Washington, Sidney Porte, Viola Davis, and so many others. He was on that course, and with his death, we thought that you know awarding him was multiple levels um, understandable and justified in a lot of ways, too. Um, so let's be really clear on something, too. We, we wanted Anthony Hopkins to win. Like we were we were rooting for Anthony and we knew how much of an underdog that win would be just feeling the cultural moment of Chadwick winning. So, you know, we wanted Anthony Hopkins to win, but that doesn't mean we were expecting it. Yeah. So when Anthony Hopkins' name got called, I, 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 I flipped my lid. I could not believe it. Like I, I would have bet the house on Chadwick winning. Anthony Hopkins' performance in the final, for me personally, was the best performance of last year. It's arguably Hopkins' best performance of his, of his entire career. Absolutely. And it's one of my favorite performances of the past few years. Like, it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. I was happy he got nominated. He wasn't even at the award show. Classic. Uh, which is, you know, Hopkins, like, you know, the man's, what, 85? He's yeah. like, I don't need to show up to this. He hasn't come to the last few nominations he's gotten, yeah. too. Yeah, he's nominated last year, didn't show Two up. Two hopes, yeah. Yeah, so when he won, it, it felt like, I was telling KP, I bet a lot of people went, well, Chadwick's going to win anyways. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, you know, vote Hopkins. But since everyone's writing in Chadwick, my Hopkins vote won't matter. And then Hopkins won. And it ends so, like, uncere uh, unceremoniously. Because he wasn't there to give a speech. Yeah, but uh, with Joaquin Phoenix just going, oh, well, you know, Hopkins isn't here, and the show just ends. It is the most bizarre thing. You can tell they wanted to end with this very somber, heartfelt moment of rewarding Chadwick, a standing ovation, his wife probably getting the award. And you can, you can feel Sodenberg like, this is gonna hit. Yep. People are gonna love this. And instead, we get Anthony Hopkins winning, rightfully so. Yep. A very deserved award. But he's not there, and you got Joaquin Phoenix like, all right, show's over. Yep. <laughs> just, Classic Joaquin. It's, it's, so I thought this year was going to be somewhat normal. I know the show had to be different, mm -hmm. and, but with uh, how the show was presented for Soderbergh from everything we mentioned, like, what a... My head's still spinning. So. Yeah, I'm like, I got a headache. Like, honestly, like, it's just like, it's overwhelming just because of the structure being what it is. And again, yeah, uh, echoing what the mayor just said, I mean, the show was really fun. It was from the get-go, you know, that the long, the long, uh, you know, kind of roll take following Regina King all the way to the doorway of a Union Station all the way to the stage was really cool. You just get that sense right away that it was going to be something different. And that was really cool. And it felt that way throughout the whole show. I noted constantly how much I loved the fact that there was natural light in yeah. the building because yeah. it was at Union Station. So the windows were open, allowing sunlight to just naturally illuminate the room. And as the night set, you know, the darkness kind of allowed for like certain lighting. It's just, it's fantastic. But yeah, it just, it, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I mean, my head hurts. <laughs> it's like I said, it's like for everything that was expected and safe, you know, Nomadland winning, we expected that closure out expected even the weird ones I and mean, we haven't gotten to the other weird things you know my octopus teacher winning documentary uh we have feelings about that yeah you know yeah. um we knew it was going to happen it doesn't change how much it hurts <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah it's oh as well as two distant two strangers, distant strangers. Yeah. as a black man i have a lot of issues with that movie <laughs> and i get the heart behind it but uh no yeah, no. we can make a whole other video seriously ranting yeah. about some of these choices here. Yeah. But at least there wasn't like one film overall where I'm like, I hope this film just does not win anything. No Absolutely not. hatred. Like I said, it's just, I guess it fits that a bizarre show for such a, you know, hard and bizarre year that we had, you know. It's, it's going to be running in my mind. I like a lot of things they did. Like you mentioned the natural lighting. It's cool to see shots. There's people sitting with lamps, you know, the Oscar lamps around. Bong Joon Ho, uh, presenting director. I don't want to say on this too long, but it's cool because he like, did like a little director trick and you can feel Bong Joon's like, Movie match. Yeah, <laughs> totally. He's just standing there. And I'm going to continue in Korea now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was really cool. So there's little bits here and there. I know a lot of people have already been saying online that the show is a bit too serious for them. But a lot of people also hate how comedic the Academy tries to make right. it. You know, the Academy is supposed to be, you know, the most official movie award show. So I don't mind. But hey, I'm still blown away just how fast everything went. They right. are just... And I, and I think the argument, I think, is that's the thing, like you mentioned, about being too serious and too comic. You know, when it comes to the Oscars, there's just there's no pleasing everyone. I think the biggest thing for me is not about it needing to be more funny or more serious. It's about utilizing your time properly. Commercials drag the show, so therefore when the show runs long, it runs very long. I was in love with the fact that we were making such good time um, and that the show didn't waver on anything. You know, even as much as I know some people really like it when they settle a little bit more in, on, in memoriam, you know, they... they, they they paced out the editing to time with the rhythm of the song and then kind of double timed it during some of the choruses to kind of make sure they got everyone and they got everyone in in one song, which was really, really beautiful. Um, it's just, I, I liked it. I liked it a lot. And I thought that as much as people like to think it was too serious, I don't really see that because the heartfelt naturalness of the presenters yeah. making jokes, 
Uh, some scripted, obviously, with the uh, the teleprompter, but some of them just like reacting. I mean, Regina King set the tone right off the bat. She literally sets down the statue and does like a little little outward pirouette and kind of stumbles. And so, first line of dialogue once this applause is like, "We're doing this live, people!" Like it's just like it's such sets such a great tone of honesty. We've been through hell this last year, and these films bring us uh, light and harmony and heart and uh, lift us up, even in their hard, serious subject matters, and even in their surprises, the upsets, the happy surprises, and things like that. The honesty of a great night to honor justifiably good film is something that we can we can really latch onto. I think I think that was embodied very well tonight. I you know I just, I don't I think this is actually probably one of the better shows of the last like, ten years. Yeah. You know? it, we actually went pretty smooth for how I was worried with the, the social distancing, and masks, no mask, all that kind of things going on, which we expected. But all ran smooth. I would definitely change the best picture thing back to the way it should be. That just uh, doesn't work, guys. Just, it, was, it just doesn't work. I kind of felt bad for Chloe Zhao, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, like this little independent filmmaker who has got the biggest stage of all time. And it's like, all right, you know, we got we got to re reward Chadwick. Yeah. You know, we got actors to take care of, Chloe. Take, you know, people like the celebrities. Yeah. Know? And the mayor was even betting. He was really hoping. I was really excited for you. <laughs> he was betting that Chloe Zhao, even winning director or picture, that would have been like been a great segue to like promote her Eternals Marvel oh. film. And now Chloe Zhao, County Award winners, <laughs> upcoming film, The Eternals. But we didn't get that either. Yeah. It just gave her like such like a kind of like, not like a slap, but like a little bit of like an undercut dig to like yeah. not appreciating and giving a proper platform to yeah. smaller films like yeah. Nomadland. And again, we're not necessarily the highest praisers of the film, but there is merit and there's justifiable uh, defense for like recognizing these films. If they're on the Oscar stage, give them that time. And obviously they did that with the length of acceptance speeches, but also the format for Best Picture being at the end is something that justifiably feels natural as a, a wonderful climax yeah. to embody. Every category has a subtext of its smaller contribution to film. And Picture represents all of it in one, you know? And I just, it's, it just didn't feel right. Yeah, it felt, felt dirty. Yeah. I felt dirty. Yeah, I, 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 I get where the concept is going, but mm -hmm. I still can't believe that uh, that this happened and that they went for it, you know? Very yeah. bizarre, very bizarre. And I know Chloe Zhao will get her dues you know, whenever the Eternals fairly drop and everything you know I highly advise people to still check out her work um, but yeah still the the big thing was Anthony Hopkins winning I know a lot of people watching this I'm sure is upset that Chadwick didn't win I really want a lot of people just about everybody to watch The Father yeah. please do it's an incredible film really happy it won at two Academy Awards and Anthony Hopkins is a revelation so yeah. at least it's not like a terrible surprise you know even though yes. all five Best Actor nominees I loved all five but yeah what a show, KP. I, yeah. I don't know what else more there is to say. Like, I feel like I got to go take a nap and or do a few shots. I got to go. Uh, yeah, we got to get drunk. Yeah. <laughs> for real. Yeah, for whiskey and coke waiting. So. Yeah. Oh. So, you guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been wonderful. We really hope you guys got a chance to watch the Oscars. If you didn't, obviously, you can go to abc.com to rewatch the clips. YouTube obviously has those promotions and things like that as well. And yeah, catch it. Obviously, check us out on Instagram and Facebook. We'll have links hopefully at the bottom. I don't know how fast we'll edit this. <laughs> um, <Get it. laughs> yeah, please like, subscribe. Please comment your opinions. Please, we'd love to hear, hear what you thought. Mm -hmm. What were your choices? Um, and then obviously, um, please like spread the word for the Oscars, you know? Um, the big thing for us we're excited about, we'll obviously make a video later in the year when we do it, the Oscar Museum opens yes. at the end of the year on September 30th. The mayor and I both got our uh, subscription passes for a year. We will, we are doing our best to get there day one, September 30th, to be there at opening, and we'll try to do some fun video clips and photos yeah. and splice something together. Be we would love video. to do that for you guys. Yeah, get you a little inside scoop. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching. Bye, guys.